what's stopping you from making more progress in your work? What's stopping you from showing up more fully? Is it because you don't have enough training yet, enough knowledge? Is it because you have to finish something else before you can do this? Is it because you're distracted? I have seen uh, so many people um, either make a lot of progress in their work and people who get stuck for years in, in you know, kind of like a spinning wheel. And I'm gonna suggest that there is one common core reason why people don't show up fully for their work. And it's fear, fear of making a mistake, fear of looking badly to others or to themselves, fear of disappointing themselves, fear of not getting good results essentially, right? So I wanna offer you a different alternative and, the, and the, the, this idea of, of not showing up fully because of fear is because you really believe that the result matters a lot. Whatever moment of work you're in, you are really, uh, whenever you are attached to what the outcome is, it's therefore very easy to be afraid that the outcome isn't going to be good. So let me offer you a different alternative to this. The moment of work, whether you are writing a blog post, whether you are creating a course, whether you are uh, finishing your website, what are you, whether you are preparing for a meeting, whatever the moment of work is, what if it's not about the result the outcome, what if there is a much deeper meaning to the moment, a much higher meaning to the reason for the work? Now, what might that meaning be? It depends on your life philosophy, and I'm going to share with you three possibilities of philosophies, and I'm really curious which one resonates with you. And in fact, I welcome you to comment below as you listen through these and see which one uh, makes sense to you. So here are all three before you make a decision. Ready? All right. Philosophy number one is God. All right. So imagine that you have the most, the best parent in the world, the most loving and wise and generous and caring parent in the whole universe. Well, that's what those of us who believe in God believe. God is the most unconditionally loving and omnisciently wise uh, being in the whole universe and happens to be your real parent. You know, your mom and dad, the one who gave birth to you, those are just your physical parents or you could even say God is your real physical parent because God is your creator, right? God is the creator of all, including you. And God has the somehow magical ability to pour the entire love of the universe, focusing it just on you in every moment, just like God has the same ability to pour it on every single being in the whole universe. Well, God is infinitely powerful. And why not? Of course, it's possible. And what God wants is for you to enjoy every moment, to have the deepest joy in every moment. How is that possible? Even in struggle, even in pain, even in confusion and frustration, does God want you to experience the deepest joy, abiding love? Well, even, even, even when it's hard work or tedious or scary work, well, the fact is that God is protecting your path of growth towards ultimate happiness, the deepest power and creativity. That path that you are on, you cannot screw up. It's impossible for you to screw up. You're not that powerful. 
Okay. God is going to take care of you and your path towards ultimate bliss. And there's nothing, there's no mistake you can make that will screw up that path. You will always somehow be guided and led and lifted up on that journey, no matter if it looks scary or impossible right now, no matter if it's painful and traumatic right now. It's simply because of limited perception that you have that you don't realize, oh my God, underneath all of it is the perfect protection. Above all of it is the perfect love that's seeing you through all of it. And when you remember this, and this, hopefully this video is helping you to remember that, when you remember, then you can settle back into the joy of being a child of God. That the most important thing is to know that you are deeply and forever taken care of. So every day, every moment, if you are willing to reconnect and stay open to the spirit of God that is here within, within you and around you and through every moment is, is fully there if you're willing to reconnect. So if you reconnect even a little bit, it starts bringing you back into the joy of the moment, no matter if it is frustration and pain and struggle and impossible and, 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 and resistance and whatever it may be, it's just temporary forgetting. And I'm here to remind you. So that's the first philosophy, God. Now, I know a lot of us don't believe in God or um, don't relate to one single being called God, whatever it is, let me give you the second philosophy. The second philosophy is soul evolution. And the idea goes like this. The experiences you have in this life is a school. This earth, this life that you've been born into is a school to evolve your consciousness, your soul. All the stuff that you do, the tasks on your to-do list, no matter how important or urgent, it matters far less than the opportunity that this moment has for your growth, for your soul's evolution. So your calling, yes, what your purpose is, the deepest purpose of your life, according to this philosophy, is that you are called in each moment to grow. And how do we grow? We open ourselves to the opportunity of growth available in each moment. We make our, our, our presence available to the experience that is here right now. Whatever experience you are having right now, if you are fully in that experience, you are growing. How are you growing? Well, there's a million ways to grow. But sometimes the growth literally is, huh, you learn something. Sometimes it's a mental expansion of knowledge and ideas. Sometimes the growth is not verbal. It's not possible to be named. It's not some idea that you are learning. But the growth is some strengthening of a, of, a, of a muscle, emotional muscle, of, of, of openness, willingness. Sometimes it's um, the growth is uh, simply patience, just at going through an experience and finding out afterwards that you're still okay if it's a difficult experience. That's growth too. You might not have learned some specific lesson but the fact that you went through it and you're on the other side and you're still here and you're still conscious means that you realize oh i can go through that the next time i go through that you know you'll have this recognition that oh i've been through that before and i can come out of it on the other side okay and the thing the fact about soul evolution and your journey is that 
once again, it is impossible to screw it up. There is nothing you can do to get off the path of growth. No matter what happens, life is going to happen to you and you will come out the other side of life still conscious, still aware that you just, kind of, you just came through life. Now, again, I'm, this path of soul evolution or this philosophy of soul evolution assumes that your consciousness lasts forever, that you will be awake and aware even after this body dies, after your body dissolves and you, you know, your heart stops and your brain stops, your mind will still be aware and go, wait a second, I'm still alive? Wait a second, <laughs> right? So if it is true that you are always going to be, have available to you the opportunity for growth, which is true, as I said, growth happens in a million ways, then that means there is unlimited hope for you. There is eternal opportunity for you to become better, to become stronger and wiser, more loving, more creative, have more patience, have more courage, have more grace and lightheartedness about it all. There is unlimited hope for you because every moment, every moment is possible as a deeply growing moment. So that means every moment has an underlying layer of joy because it's you're either going to experience something fun or no matter what, there's always the experience of growth that's possible if you tap into it, if you open yourself to it. So, all right, that's the second philosophy, soul evolution. The third philosophy is YOLO. You only live once. So this is the uh, agnostic or atheistic philosophy where oh, we don't know if there's an afterlife. Uh, nobody has proven that, George. Science tells us that uh, this is, you know, materialistic science shows us that this is it. That's all we know. Consciousness, no one's ever scientifically proven to have come back. Sure, there are tens of thousands of near-death experience stories, but that's not scientific. Those are just anecdotes. You only live once, all right? So if you only live once and results are not guaranteed, no, nobody can guarantee you results. You can't guarantee that no matter how hard you work, no matter how smart you are, you still might fail in any endeavor. Isn't that true? Because there are so many other factors in society that, you know, in your, in your own biology, right? One day you might wake up and just be completely unable to, to do anything. And you, you couldn't have predicted that perfectly. Another day, uh, something might happen to you from outside of you that prevents you from continuing to work on the project that you've been so excited about. So it doesn't matter. You can't guarantee any results. I don't care how hard you work. I don't care the perfect strategy you came up with to get some result. doesn't matter. None of it matters. None of it you can control except for one thing, which is your, re your own reaction in any moment. That's the only reliable source of control that you have. Not what other people react to you and therefore, you know, if it's your business, they give you money, they give you, it doesn't matter how perfectly you came up with your offer, what a big audience you have, doesn't matter. It still might not work. So the only thing you have left in your control is how will I re react and respond to this moment? Sure, some of your reactions might be instinctual. But even that you can train, right? Maybe naturally you react negatively to a lot of situations. I know a lot of people for whom that's true. But even that can be trained. I used to react to, with fear to many, many situations. I grew up in a, a, a very timid person. 
and very um, with a with a very low self esteem. That's how I grew up. But I, over the years, trained myself to react to every situation with either gratitude or with a reframing that、mm, this wasn't a good experience. But what can I? How can I let that be something that makes me stronger and wiser? How can I react to that situation with a little bit more grace next time? Let's give it a try. Thank you for that experience. You know, be grateful for it. So, you only live once, and all you can do is react to every moment and control your reaction. So, if nothing really, if no results and outcomes matter in life, because you can't. Really control it? Sure, you can. You can always try to influence it, but no matter what, you can't. The failure or success will happen, surprise you oftentimes. So you might as well try to react positively to every situation. You might as well enjoy every moment. So, which of these three philosophies? God is protecting you at all times. You are a child of God, or two. Your soul is evolving. Who knows if there's a God? But your soul is evolving forever. You might as well look at the growth in each moment. Or three, you only live once. Might as well have fun and enjoy it, or at least try to shape your reactions towards joy whenever possible. So, which of these three do you relate to? Or maybe there's a fourth one. You can you can comment below. Whichever of these three you choose, or maybe there's a fourth. I think that the Higher meaning of each moment is unanimous, or the deeper meaning, which is there is the possibility of joy in every moment. So, whatever difficulty you are having with any task or what whatever you are scared to do, oh, I don't know if I remember that your any kind of resistance towards any work. Hard work, difficult work, intimidating project. Any resistance is because you've temporarily forgotten that. Oh, there is a much deeper meaning to every moment of work, which is joy. And if you can remember that every day, then you realize that oh, the way I approach every moment is really my top priority. This is what I call our highest work. <laughs> our highest work is not hmm, what is my job? Hmm, what is going to be my service or my product that I offer? What's my highest work? That's not what I consider to be our highest work. I consider to be the state of being you bring to the next hour, to the next minute, is your highest work, because you can bring a state of joy. Or you can bring a state of hyper focus on I got to get this email right, or I got to get this、uh, web page right, and any kind of hyper focus on you got to get this right means you've temporarily forgotten about the higher meaning of that moment, which is ah,、oh, might as well enjoy it. I might as well find the growth in it, or I might as well give thanks to God, whichever philosophy you believe, for this very moment. And show up and simply work my way through it with as much grace and joy as possible. So, going forward today, I invite you to try to remember again and again and again every hour, every fifteen minute block, whatever it is. I this is why I I continually do my energy reboot throughout the day. You may have heard me. Talk about this if you're not sure what it is. Go to Google and type in "energy reboot," energy reboot, and then you should be able to find my video or article. I literally do my energy reboot at least twice an hour. I try to do it three or four times an hour, sometimes even more, depending on how I catch myself feeling.、Uh, I basically, if I catch myself hyper attached to the results or the outcome of something. Not even hyper. If I if I find myself attached to the outcome or results, and therefore being hyper focused on,、oh, I got to get this right. Whenever I hear myself saying,、oh, "I got to get this right," whoa, wait, wait a second. Doesn't matter if I get this right or not. What matters more is, am I bringing 
virtue into this moment. And because that's really what, for me, my philosophy is that every moment, I believe, I kind of have uh, the combination of philosophy one and two. It's like God and soul evolution. I believe in both. Uh, so it's like, how can I bring more virtue to this moment? How can I bring more grace? How can I bring more compassion? How can I bring more, um, you know, uh, wisdom to this? How can I bring more love? And the reason I can bring more love and wisdom, and it doesn't matter what happens afterwards, what, what, however the audience re, re, uh, responds to it, whether I look bad or I look good, well, whatever, okay? is because none of it matters except for the connection to divine source in this moment. That's what matters to me the most. So this is why I'm able to work persistently and joyfully day after day, year after year. I look at uh, some of the peers that I started with back in 2009, 2000, I started my business in 2009 and 2009, 2010, 2011, I had a lot of peers back then that are no longer in my industry. They're no longer doing this work. At least I don't see them around. They're not creating content on a consistent basis and serving that way. And many of them have left the industry, uh, even though they're very talented. They were very smart. They were very hardworking. But for one reason or not, they burned out. Um, they didn't get the results sometimes that they were deeply attached to. And so that's, you know, that's why they're no longer here, but they're, I'm sure they're doing something else and they're giving their talents in, in some other way, but I'm still here. And not only am I here, I'm stronger than ever and I'm happier than ever. And gratefully, my, my results are good if you look at it as an average over a long period of time. But that's, that's what tends to happen is if you can stick around, work joyfully day after day and not get so attached to results, your results tend to be spectacular over time. I've said before that I am a perfectionist but I'm no longer a small picture perfectionist. I'm no longer a perfectionist for every project, for every you know, course that I launch, for every group that I run. I'm no longer a perfectionist for every blog post, or every video, no longer. I've given that up a long time ago. I am now a big picture perfectionist. I believe in the perfection of the entire story and that I am going to be taken care of forever. I have no trust fund. I've said that before. I have to make my own money to be able to survive. And just like many of us, I believe you will be taken care of forever, even without a trust fund. Some of you may have a trust fund. Congratulations. And, or, or not. Sometimes it can be a, a difficult thing. But you will be taken care of no matter what. And in every moment, know that there is the possibility of joy. I hope this is nourishing. I hope this helps. I hope this helps you to work with more persistent grace and joy so that you can see ultimately excellent results as well, which come in its own time. But every day can be fun, deeply, deeply fun, not necessarily surfacey fun, which is uh, what a lot of us mistakenly think uh, happy work means but it can be deeply joyful, no matter the struggle, no matter the confusion, no matter you know, uh, the, you know, the external results. Remember, you can always reconnect to the deepest joy. I wish you well. I am George Cow, Authentic Business Coach. Uh, love talking about how do we continue to grow a business that is deeply meaningful to us, and it starts here in every moment. So wishing you well. Take care.